Hey everybody, this is Pete Brown, and I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, amateur SMD soldering here. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean the board with some 99% alcohol. That gets all the residue and other gunk off and cleans the pads. I don't have gold pads, these are just regular old, uh, you know, soldered top, uh, whatever you call them, pads there. The cheap stuff. You can tell I'm not a pro with this. Now I'm getting the chips and getting some other pieces ready. Okay, here's the flux that I'm using. It comes in a pen, so it's nice and easy to put on. I just make sure I get the pads all nice and uh, wet with the flux. Um, without the flux, nothing here really works. All right, now I'm gonna protect the pads for some of the discrete components because I don't want to get any solder or flux on those. Here's the Heiko tip. Sorry about the focus there. Here we go. Um, so it's a flat tip and I'm just gonna tin it and make sure that the tip is all good. Clean it in the wire brush. This is a ST, STM 8S 103, I believe. So it's a, you know, uh, from uh, ST Micro. This module itself is a Netwino Go Atari joystick module. Uh, and the chip that's on here makes it possible for the module to surface the different pins from the two joysticks and whatnot. Now, the, the hardest part about soldering these types of devices is um, uh, being able to actually uh, get the pieces or get the pins on the pads properly. So the flux does help a little bit with keeping the uh, keeping the pins sort of sticky, but it's just the initial alignment can be a bit of a, a, a tricky prospect. Now I've got a visor on that's uh, magnifying. It's sort of gonna pop in and out of the frame every once in a while here. Uh, it has a focal length of like three inches. So I'm really right in the, uh, right in what I'm doing here. Some folks use a microscope for this. You don't need a microscope uh, unless you're doing really, really small stuff. I, just, I find the visor adequate for this. Oh, just pop that off. Here, let's do this and just kind of call it a day. As long as it's really close, I think you're good. You just want to make sure that you have good contact. Um, you know, I, ideally you want them to be perfectly centered and certainly if you're doing this professionally, they have to be for hobby stuff. Um, you just need to make sure you have good contact between the pads and the pins. So now what I need to do is actually tack the device down. So I'm gonna tack it with a little bit of solder directly on the tip of the iron. It's a little harder in this first step because there's no flux on the pins. There's only flux on the pads. If you have a, a kind of a gel flux that you can squirt on this, it becomes a bit easier. I don't. So just the act of putting flux on the pins would have moved it out of position. And I didn't feel like going through the alignment process again. So I usually tack it on two opposite corners. Ooh, super close up of my hand there. Focus. So there I'm getting the opposite corner. There. Once you've done that, um, the chip is pretty well fixed to the board. So you can uh, do this drag soldering process. Before I do the drag soldering though, I want to get some flux on those pins. So, you know, the, the solder just is not going to flow properly without the flux. So if you take away one thing from this video, I would say the most important thing is making sure that you use flux. Again, the, the kind of gel flux can be nicer. I've just never used it and don't have any handy. I believe it has sort of a, um, a less of a shelf life. The pen flux I found to be pretty good. Um, the downside of it is just what I said earlier, just the act of putting the flux on the chip can, um, you know, can move the chip around. Whereas the gel one, you can just sort of mash it on there. All right, here we go. So now I'm gonna drag that across. And it'll take some experimentation to get the rate right. This side I had to do twice because there's one pin that just did not want to fully wet. And do the other side. I'm trying to get the pin and what little bit of the pad is, a, is visible. Put some more solder on the tip of the iron. It's really nice because this flat tip um, 
prevents the solder from you know forming bridges and uh, whatnot between the pins because it's um, you know the solder tends to stick to the iron itself there we go last one just go across now I'm going to take a look at that So I'm checking it over, make sure it all looks good. You can see the visor in the corner there. So I'm getting a slightly better look at it at, uh, than, than you are in the video. And then I use the alcohol again to clean off the flux while it's still um, removable. Once you let the flux harden, it's really hard to clean off. I get a fair bit of alcohol all over the place, it's okay. Don't do this on the kitchen table. Not if you want the finish to stay on. There's that one pin, uh, it's pin number two, that didn't want to uh, wet fully. I'm gonna have to take another look at that after this, see what's up with that. It's possible that it's um, not in full contact with the pad or something. Um, to inspect that, I'll have to use either a loop or, um, in that case, really stick it under a microscope. But a loop ought to make it possible for me to see. A loop is, uh, you know, like a little uh, Dr. Monocle thing that uh, jewelers use to inspect things up close. You can pick them up pretty much anywhere. Otherwise, it all looks good. Now the next thing I want to do is solder on a couple of little capacitors. These are 0603 size capacitors that are going to go in the first and third um, 0603 positions over there uh, uh, video orientation wise under the chip um, board orientation to the left of uh, left of that microcontroller. Here they are. I ordered them on the real I don't know if I'll ever use this many capacitors in my life, but they're just so much cheaper to order by the real. Uh, and if I decide to actually get some things manufactured in the future, then uh, I can provide the reels to, um, to you know, to the manufacturing house if they don't already have these. Now these so 0603s are not the smallest packages. Um, but they're small enough. This is about as small as I can hand solder. Uh, I think there's a 0404, 0402, and even an 020 something, and perhaps even smaller sizes than that underneath this. Um, but that's just too much to hand solder. So again with the flux, put that on the two pads that I'm going to be working with. And then what I do is I put just enough solder to get um, one pad on each component. There's my scarf in the swimming pool of all places. Sorry about that. Um, I put just enough solder on the two pads there, um, one pad per component, to be able to, um, you know, get wet the pad and give me something to stick the component into. So here we go. So what I do is I get the solder melted on the pad and sort of push the component into it from the side. Not from the top, but from the edge. My tweezers have a burr on the end, so they're sticking to stuff. It doesn't matter if it's 100% straight. It's especially hard on video to get 100% straight, but as long as you're not bridging the two pads and you have yourself roughly centered between those. So again, melt and push it in. I try and touch the component and the pad at the same time if possible. All right. Now what I need to do is go around to the other side. Let's see if I can make it so you can see this a little better. There we go. One of the other tricks to this is using as fine a wire solder as you can. If you use like big globby Radio Shack solder, you're gonna use too much. As it is here, um, it can be hard to get that minimal amount of solder on. 
like that's too big a ball, but it'll work. So try and get a fillet there, or fill it, as some people say. I had eight years of French, I can't call it a fillet. So hard to see on video, um, but there's uh, you know good coverage on each end of the component. The, the end of the capacitor is fully covered. 